Hello and welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. Thousands of inmates sentenced to state prison are instead serving their time in our local jails. It's a part of what's called realignment and it started about two years ago. Here now with uh, his perspective on the effect it's having, having on our local uh, communities is Todd Spitzer, Supervisor Todd Spitzer. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Leslie. Good to see you. So what effect are you seeing this have on Orange County? Well, it's kind of mixed. I mean, our prisons are overcrowded, so the state legislature said we're not going to build new prisons and we're not going to ship prisoners out of state. We're going to send them to our county jails and let them serve their time now many, many years in some cases. And we'll see if the county jail, the county locals, people like me, board of supervisors, can do a better job, mostly at reducing recidivism. It's kind of a mixed bag. We're reducing recidivism because we're doing more programming, but we have a lot more dangerous people in our county jails. So the whole idea was to get them involved in programs, some rehab and some things like that, and maybe do some alternative sort of monitoring like these ankle bracelets that we've heard a lot about. But we've seen that that really isn't working so far because the monitors need to be monitored. No, absolutely. A couple things. First of all, I think we can do a better job with lower level offenders by keeping them in our county jails and doing programs because they are going to come back in our community. And so having them closer to home, you know, their families and their support network, mm -hmm. we have a greater probability of it being effective. But what's happening also is they're allowing individuals to go out. In other words, when the state prisoners fill those beds in our county jails, you're pushing other people out the door who cannot, uh, there's no space for them. So they're going to be put on alternatives like GPS monitoring. And what we're finding now, we found with our county contract with our local vendor, is that they weren't properly monitoring those people who are in electronic confinement. So the fact is you do have to monitor the monitors. You have to be diligent. Just because somebody's not in jail and they're on electronic monitor doesn't mean that they're uh, necessarily uh, not, not jeopardizing public safety. So what effects are we seeing this as having on our crime rates locally? Crime rates are going up. The individuals who should be in state prison who are now in our county jails and getting out early mm -hmm. are committing more crime. There's just no doubt about it. Most people who go to state prison my background as a police officer and prosecutor, mm -hmm. they didn't just go to state prison, they graduated state prison. You generally just don't go there directly unless you committed a super heinous crime. So if you have a life of crime, it takes a while to graduate to state prison. So those individuals have really shown that they are gonna lead a life of crime. Just because they spent their time in state prison, now they're back on our streets, doesn't mean they're not gonna go back to committing their crimes. Now this all sta started because <clears throat> of a court case that the state lost because of jail overcrowding, the conditions in the jail, and so the uh, governor essentially passed the buck uh, bringing the prisoners to our local uh, facilities. Uh, what are the other options that you see? Because essentially the buck has to stop somewhere. Are we seeing overcrowding now in our local jails? Well, we pu we're putting people who we are calling low-level offenders. I don't necessarily believe that's true, mm -hmm. but that's the category they thought could come here. Mm -hmm. Now they're getting to the point where this three-judge panel, federal panel, mm -hmm. said, and after the Supreme Court said, you need to release California prisoners, mm -hmm. another 10,000. So we've released 50,000 uh, in the last five years, and now they want another 10,000, and now we're talking about a much more difficult and dangerous population. So now, we're talking about shipping those people out of state. What kinds of alternatives do you see as m most viable right now? Well, when I was the chairman of the select committee overseeing prisons in the state legislature when I was in the assembly, we contracted with other states, Tennessee, Florida, states like that that had room in private prisons that could allow us to ship our inmates there. And that's what we did, and it was very effective. Because your point being, too, uh, we're running out of low-level prisoners to transfer to local jails. And you're starting to see some of the higher, um, you know, more uh, dangerous, violent felons who need to be shipped out. We're seeing those individuals, they want to ship locally. We're mm -hmm. seeing the inability to arrest and to prosecute and to incarcerate low-level offenders, drunk drivers, petty thieves, things like that, things like that population that normally spent their time in county jail. And so the whole system's in flux, but the fact is we cannot afford to jeopardize public safety. And it really is the state's responsibility. So if they don't want to build new prisons, they've got to ship these p people to prisons in other states. And two years down the line now, we're starting to see the effects of all we're this. We're seeing the effects and we know that crime is up. Todd Spitzer. Thank you, Leslie. Nice to talk to you and uh, glad you're with us. Thanks for joining us.